Time to get nervous. We're talking about the nervous system and the different types of cells that we see within the nervous system. In a previous video, I covered some of the major definitions that you should understand, along with the breakdown or hierarchy of the nervous system. Before you get into this video, watch those as well to start the progression of understanding how the nervous system works. When we covered nervous system to start, we said there's two types of cells, the nerve cells, which are neurons, and then the neuroglia or glial cells, which are supporting cells. There's four types of neurons that we see. The majority of them are multipolar neurons. Over 90% of them are multipolar. And we'll talk about the definitions of them and what they do. And then a future video, we'll discuss the six types of neuroglia or glial cells, which are supporting cells. There's four in the central nervous system, two in the peripheral nervous system. Remember our central nervous system is the brain and spinal cord. Our peripheral, as we go to the outside of the body, are the nerves and the receptors that help communicate to the central nervous system. So let's talk about the different types of neurons. Remember I said the majority of them are multipolar. Anaxonal or anaxonic, meaning it's without an axon because we rely on an axon to move information as it's processed through the cell body. So it's limited in its function, and we tend to see this in the central nervous system, and its primary function is sensory. The body, when we look at the nervous system, tends to do three things. It senses things, it interprets, and then it reacts. And when we look at anaxonal, some texts will still say we're looking into, we're not fully understanding how they function, but they tend to have more of a sensory function, which the structure makes sense for it. Remember, the structure creates the function based on how it has no axon, it has limited ability to move information. So anaxonal. Pseudo unipolar, and some books will still refer to it as unipolar, meaning when I look at it, I have a cell body, but then I have two extensions coming off of it, and one's parting leading to the axon and then the other side, the dendrites, but we call it pseudo, meaning false, that it looks unipolar. So as I look at this, there may be two pieces coming off, but it's just one extension here. So there's one piece coming off the cell body, but then it splits. So that's why I refer to it as pseudo unipolar. Majority of our unipolar or pseudo unipolar, its primary function is again sensory, but more of a general standpoint. So when we talk about a reflex arc, can I feel this or this or this? It feels the same. So I refer to that as a general sensation because it feels the same in different parts of the body that I can interpret it and talk to my central nervous system. Versus bipolar, now I truly have two extensions coming off the cell body. So one and two. So refer to that as bipolar. Where we tend to see these are special senses. So our eyes are loaded with bipolar neurons. So special, meaning these are now specialized cells or nerve cells to coordinate things like taste, like hearing, vision. So when we get to vision and we talk about the different receptors we see within the retina, we'll talk about bipolar cells. So these first three all have a sensory function. But remember when I said motor function or interpretation is done by multipolar. So when I look at a cell body, I have all these extensions coming off like a tree and then the major axon that comes through. A multipolar neuron, meaning there's multiple extensions coming off of it. And over 90% of all of our neurons are multipolar. Their function is interpret and react. So their primary function is that motor reaction. What are we doing based on our sensations? So these are the four types of neurons that we see within the body. Primarily focusing on multipolar. If we look at a multipolar and I expand this, we're going to look at different segments of it. When we look at a multipolar, all I did was expand that and we're looking at different pieces to it. All of our receiving information is occurring all of these segments off a cell body called a dendrite. And then these dendrites process the information and it goes through the cell body, which is also called the soma. S-O-M-A is also the cell body for a neuron. So within this soma, I have my typical nucleus, and then that small center dot is nucleolus, but no different than the, any other cell. It has that nucleus. It also has all the other organelles that I can't see on here for anything from endoplasmic reticulum to ribosomes. But as I receive the information, We'll talk about the neuronal impulse and moving it, but let's just understand the structure. So I have dendrites, these extensions off the cell body, they're receiving information. 
and these receptors that may talk to it, it receives information and then I get a motor response. That's a result of multipolar. Received it, responded. And a lot of the times our reflex is done through multipolar neurons and we're affecting or using this to up impact or affect something like a gland or a muscle. As they process this information, what it does is it summates all the reactive process that's going to occur. And remember, this is all based on membrane potentials when we talk about sodium, potassium, and calcium. So the balance of those ions controls the rate in which we move things across the axon. Where we have the beginning of the axon and it comes off the cell body, we refer to this extension as the axon hillock, where it summates and puts all the information together to then run across the axon. So the axon is the blue underneath. And when we get into what covers it in the central nervous system, we use oligodendrocytes, and these are supporting cells to myelinate the axon. When we have the peripheral nervous system, we use Schwann cells. And in a future video, we'll talk about the different neuroglia or glial cells. But this myelin sheath is a wider appearance, and it's got lipids to it. And because of that appearance to it, we often refer to this as white matter because it gives that white appearance based on the fatty sheath of it. So we call that the myelin sheath. And the way this is designed is for this information to move and we call this saltatory conduction that I go from one segment to the next and that's called nodes of Ranvier. Essentially, it's speeding up the impulse by jumping to each node and speeding it across. I always look at it, if I'm trying to run across a room, is it faster to run from one wall to the next? Or if I could physically just jump from wall, one wall to the next, which is faster? If I can jump, it's going to be faster. And that's what the, the impulse is doing as well. It's jumping from one node or node of Rambier to the next. As I process and move all that information, it gets, gets down to the end of the neuron, which we call synaptic bulb, synaptic terminals. You'll see different terms for this. But this is when we're releasing the communication, usually by way of a neurotransmitter, to process what just occurred through that multipolar neuron to give me a reaction. So we get into things like sliding filament theory and how the muscles contract at that neuromuscular junction. The neuron's talking to the muscle. So we're releasing either a connection to talk to the next neuron or to the effector, again, which is a muscle or a gland or both, depending on the reaction. So when we look at multipolar neuron, these are the majority of the cells that we see for nerve cells. The other ones that we discussed are primarily sensory. Bipolar, we see for special senses. Pseudo unipolar or unipolar, we see for sensory. And exonal, we tend to see just in the central nervous system for sensory information. As you learn these cells, then we start to create a pathway for understanding the highway of how do I get a communication from all my senses, visceral sensory, somatic sensory, and then my special sensories, all to talk to my central nervous system. And it's happening all the time. And now we got to create a reaction to that, and we do that through multipolar neurons. I've been teaching anatomy for about 24 years now. I try to simplify it the best I can, but starting with the basics of understanding the cells and how they function before we get into pathways. If you're interested, there's a study guide. Click on the study guide and see if it helps.